Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Sorry, I, I felt we needed to dance, but uh, I forgot we are dealing with bankers. <laughs> you guys don't dance. Huh? Just suits and ties. So anyway, uh, my name is Nzambi, Nzambi Mate. I'm the founder of Jijenge Makers Limited. And uh, officially, greetings. I'm from Nairobi, Kenya, born and raised. And um, yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you for coming. First time in Nigeria. I love the culture. As, uh, as he said, I love Nollywood. Everything I know is uh, based on Nollywood. Everything I know about Nigeria. And I was saying yesterday, Nigeria as a culture, you're very vibrant. But you guys shout. And you just don't realize that you're shouting. Like, I approached, I went to the airport. The visa guy like, madam, madam, come, come, come. I'm like, I promise you, I can hear you. So please don't shout. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's very refreshing. Um, so, yeah, my name is Nzambi, founder of Jijeng Emikas Limited. And unlike my previous um, presenters, I am not a banker. I'm an entrepreneur. I uh, work in the circle, uh, circular economy. So what I do in a nutshell is I convert plastic waste into building products. So I'm more in the manufacturing space. And just to give you a track record as to why I started, um, we all know plastic waste is not a Kenya problem. It's a worldwide problem. Everywhere you go, there is plastic waste. And that's because we as scientists and engineers, 100 years ago, we brought this cutting edge technology that changed everything but we didn't think of how it will happen and how it will be 100 years from now. And that's what we, this generation, are facing. And that will continue until we figure it out. And so for me, as a scientist, I felt there's something we can do. And right now, plastic, we solved it through ornamental solutions, so very, very aesthetic. But I wanted something that was practical, reliable, and affordable, and especially within the context of Africa. And so that's why I started Jijenge. Jijenge means build yourself in Kiswahili. For those who don't know, Kiswahili is the common language in the East African region. And so for me, I think just to cap on what Nigel has said and shout out for, for giving the stats because I don't, think, <laughs> I don't think I have the stats as you have them. But I think to just weave into what you said, there's a huge role for ESG and especially a bit between creating the, with, when you say blended financing. So let me just jump onto some of the challenges we face as an innovator and as an entrepreneur. In Africa, the hardest thing to get is patient capital. Patient capital is a problem. And what is happening right now is, because there's that huge gap, you find most of the foreign, in foreign companies have come to feed that gap. So the foreign companies in, in form of Silicon Valley funders, various uh, angel groups from the global north, those are the key players in the innovation space in Africa, and especially in Kenya. And what that is translating is you find that these companies, and in Kenya we've had a few, um, what uh, they may term as unicorns, but these unicorns are not Kenyan, they're not African to the core. Why? Because when they were starting, where they got capital was not here, was outside. And I'm saying that because I too faced the exact same challenge. I had to leave the continent to go outside just for someone to believe that yes, I can do this. And it's when I got the outside funding that coming here, then I would have got the funding. Just to give you also a track record, back in Kenya, just Companies just like r and I've been in this business for now close to eight years. And in the beginning, I walked to every single commercial bank in Kenya. And every single bank told me I am high risk. At that point in time, I didn't know what they meant. But now I know, I really know. <laughs> I really know what they meant. Yes, I was a very high risk. There is a price to pay when it comes to innovation, and especially innovation in the circular economy. This is a niche space, and not just in Africa. This is a niche space in the whole world. Because the difference between the tech space and the circular space is, the circular space tends to be very geographic. 
there's an element of geography that the how climate affects us as a continent might not be exactly how climate affects Europe or Asia. So there is that element of uniqueness. And that is where getting support, sustainable financing, and hopefully, Nigel, within your department, you're thinking of that. Because getting sustainable financing, that is number one, patient, and number two, comes with assistance, technical assistance on how to build solutions. Then gives not only us as entrepreneurs um, capital and uh, cash to weave, the, to build the solution, but also as a funding entity, it gives you a leverage to get within the ESG framework. And so to cap that and move on to the next stage as far as building and manufacturing is concerned, in Africa we have the legacy industries, the oil and gas, the agriculture, the, the mineral sector. In my other life I used to be in oil and gas. And these sectors are very capital intensive, for the lack of a better word. But for us to move as a continent, for us to move from just consumers to producers, we need to invest. And the investment has to start from a very small scale. So let's take a shot for ourselves. Let's bet on ourselves. And that's a challenge that I pose everywhere I go. Whether you're a financial institution, whether you're a government agency, whether you're an academic institution, bet yourself on you every time. And that is something that we Africans need to do. Because in manufacturing, once again, it's very capital intensive and the difference, unlike tech, you have to have the capital up front. In tech, you can build a tech and then start generating revenue and then build the infrastructure later. But in manufacturing, it's the other way around. And so if you can't get the upfront support, then all you have is just but a nice idea. And so with that said and done, and I'll end my discussion here by saying, and this is posing a question to you all, I know sustainability is expensive, but it need not to be expensive. It only needs to be sustainable in the context of our own use as a people. And so the demand is there as a company for our products. Our problem is not demand. Every single day I say no to a client. The problem is supply. And supply because all the machinery, the technology, the production process, we designed and fabricated ourselves. You may ask why. We started during COVID. And as you all know, the, during COVID period, the whole world shut down. Everyone who had machinery from India, from China, from Europe, they couldn't get the parts. And so they shut down. Who was left? Yours truly. Why? Because despite our machines being less efficient, we were able to build on it and work on it because we could access the parts, the technology, and five years down the line post-COVID, we're the only ones existing. And if that's anything to go by, it's time we start producing locally. And that's the first step. So with that said and done, thank you very much. And uh, I think there's a question and answer session. So thank you. Hello. Oh. So I'm going to ask that uh, if you have a question for Zambi, please you could raise up your hand and then one of the attendants with mics would bring the mic to you. I'm sure that we have questions. Please, if anybody has a question for Zambi, please signify by raising your hand now. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any questions? Yes, we have one on the other side of the lady in lemon green, please. Hello everyone, um, good, after good morning. Um, I'd like to know who are your major off-takers? Who are the people that, or the businesses, people that patronize your, your products? And on an average, how, how much or how often do you produce? Like, what is the capacity of your current production line in your facility? Thank you. Okay, um, so we have three market segments. We have the B2C market. This is the business to consumer. So ideally speaking, your normal people who want to put it in the house, but that's a relatively small fraction. Our biggest uh, fraction of customer base is the B2B, mostly the construction companies, the civil works companies, the road companies, because our product is certified for mostly road works. And then we have uh, the B2G, which is business to government. 
both the national and the local government in Kenya. So those are the three segments, but our biggest segment is the business, the const contractors and construction companies. Um, in terms of volume, right now we're pushing, so the, the, the road, the road um, space you go by square kilometers, and so right now we're doing about plus minus 0 0.01. That's very, 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 very small. If you compare to competition like uh, tarmac, asphalt, and uh, maram, that's significantly small. Um, but in terms of uh, uptake, um, as I said in the beginning, our problem is not demand, our problem is supply. So I don't know if I answer all your questions. Hi, great presentation. Um, so I've got two quick questions. So the first question is on, on the kind of B2B, is the demand coming from the businesses largely to do with pricing availability or how much of it comes from the fact that it's kind of green and social? So in other words, is there uh, some of them that will take it because it's green and, and you know they've got a specific need for that? So that's one question. The second question is you mentioned you raised capital out, out of the continent. Who did that come from? You don't have, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but it'll be interesting to know who, who it was and are they still with you on the journey? Okay. Um, so in terms of what drives the demand uh, for the B2B market, in the beginning it was actually a matter of pricing and this is a matter of uh, volume game. But then now it's slowly transitioning to an ESG um, landing uh, phase for the companies, especially in the element of using product, recycled products within their project bees. So like, for, but this one is mostly in line with most of the multinationals. The local companies are still playing the pricing game, but the multinationals have a more inclination to the ESG framework side. Um, in terms of the funding, um, so we've done a blended uh, financing a combination of uh, small grants. We have to get a good big grant because, yo, people don't want to fund R&D. Why? But anyway, um, so the blended financing comes mostly from uh, family offices and small foundations. So like bank, we have a bank foundation, we have a hedge fund foundation. So those are the, st the types of uh, funders because we are more inclined on the social impact, and, but we are, we are for-profit company. Questions? Yeah. I got one. I got, I got a mic. Don't worry. I'm, I'm the host. <laughs> so let me move away from the speaker. So, Zambi, I wanted to know one thing that drives innovation is demand. And when it comes to what you do, making waste, turning it into building materials, there must have been a demand for it, I yeah. figure. Um, but you find that in Africa, even across the world, when people say they want to perhaps maybe do something to try and save the environment, it becomes an endeavor by rich people, people who can afford it. So the question is, how affordable are these building materials that you make out of waste? Is it like owning a Tesla where only rich men can say, I own a Tesla because I'm trying to save the world, when actually it's just because the poor people can't afford Teslas. So are your building materials affordable and how is this helping ordinary Kenyans build homes? Our product is actually 10% cheaper than the conventional product. Um, and the reason why we make that is, let's not lie to each other. Africa is a mass market. No, we don't have um, disposable income easily available to be able to afford the, the Teslas of the world. And so for me, building a solution, I wanted it to be number one, practical, but also affordable. And so that's why we made it affordable. However, what we want to do is now ramp up production so that we can even bring the prices even lower. So yes, we are not Teslas, but we are Toyotas. <laughs> okay, hello. Okay. All right, hello. Hi, Nzambi. Oh. I have a question. And, um, you know, it's fantastic what you're doing. But I'm keen to know what the government of your country, Kenya, are doing to support. Are you enjoying any form of benefits, <laughs> tax holidays? What are they doing to support the wonderful job you're doing, you know, in pushing sustainability? Thank you. Thank God I can't, I'm not in Kenya. Thank God, because what I'm about to say is, is there a Kenyan here? <laughs> okay, I'm safe. Um, so fortunately or unfortunately, um, our government, and this is not just Kenya, our governments are not in the business of making innovation um, accessible. Whether it's through policies, or whether it's through enabling the environment. 
for some strange reason, this is not their mandate. Or rather, it seems not to be their mandate. But I'll not throw the baby with the bathwater. We've been able to say, as I said, one of our customer base is the B2G, business to government. But at this point in time, it's more of, um, it's more of like a cherry on top kind of thing. Because, well, we are a young company, we are young people, it's environmental friendly. So it's like the flower girl kind of approach. But that's not what we want. We want the real business approach because that's not, flower girl is not sustainable. Um, however, um, as you all know what is happening in Kenya, we, we as young people, we're changing things. And, and I truly believe things are going to change. Um, but as it is right now, it's, it's not in their agenda, if I may say so. Any other questions? There's one, okay. All right, thank you, uh, and well done for the great work you do uh, in terms of sustainability. My question is really around your comments on funding. Uh, I know that Ni uh, Kenya, they have the Nairobi Securities Exchange. Um, have you considered assessing public capital? Uh, because ESG is really one of those sustainable uh, platforms that most companies are, are looking into, and there are investors, local, international, who would really invest in companies that have, um, that play, place emphasis on ESG-related matters. Okay, um, so in terms of the security markets, um, they are very risk-averse. We think banks are risk-averse, they are even more risk-averse. So they tend to invest in more legacy industries because, well, the, the risk is more, like it's controlled. You kinda, can be able to control your risk factors. And so right now, personally, even as an entrepreneur, I don't think that's the right space of funding because then you get this capital with so much pressure. And remember, we have a lot of things that we kind of have to do research and development. And so we are shying away from that type of funding, also straight up uh, debt funding, which is very traditionally structured, or also venture capitalist funding, because we, we need some time to figure a lot of things out. We figured out the one part, but we have like 99 to go. And so that kind of funding will not make our work any easy. And that is why we see the angle of uh, whether it's grants or ES, support from ESG framework being a bit more lenient and mostly patient. Rather than a question, it's a suggestion. Why don't you think about crowdfunding? Crowdfunding, I think you can get more one than what the banks can give you and what is a requirement. In case your country has regulations for that or not, you can think about it. Because even general people and people like us and anywhere in the world, you can get a lot of money. All the best to you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Crowdfunding is what we're actually sustaining ourselves in because it comes in form of sales. So we get what we call pre-orders. That gives us cash flow to be able to do the production. It's a bit stressful, but it's good business because the best type of funding is sales as an entrepreneur. So yeah, that's what we're living on every single day. Okay, so I think I'll end my session here. Thank you very much and have a good morning. Bye-bye.